I ain't about to show you my keys. I live right over there. I'm about to call the cops. Man, forget that. I live right over there. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm trying to buy something, but you keep on following me. Just making sure everything's all right. Everything is fine, bro. I know how to shop. I got the bread, bro. Man, I'm hungry. Yeah, me too, low key. What you trying to eat? Bush. Wait, let me guess. Fried chicken. Right here, bro. Not all black people eat chicken, bro. Not all Asians like sushi. But you gonna like this? <laughs> As you can see in scene one, uh, it was just a small example of racial profiling and racial discrimination amongst so, so neighbors. Discrimination and racial profiling is the exact thing the organization that Black Lives Matter fights for. And like, we need to stop that now. Some of the issues that happened in the video included uh, being stereotypical, racially profiling somebody, and discrimination towards one another due to the color of their skin. As you see in the video, you seen the person being stereotypical and racial profiling the person when he asked him, did he live here? And was he, like, where are his keys at? Like, and any normal person, like maybe a white uh, Caucasian person, you wouldn't ask where his keys are or where he lives. Damn. In scene two, I played the loss prevention security guard for the uh, store. So in scene two, you can see that I was playing the innocent shopper. During that scene, you can see that I was getting racially profiled also and racially stereotyped. But not only was I getting those two type of different type of discriminations. I'll also I'll also put that as in social injustice because why would he discriminate me and say I'm the one that's supposed to be stealing or anything in that area. A couple of facts about Black Lives Matter will probably be they fight for all the stuff that we named in the previous videos. They also the reason they started the origins of Black Lives Matter started with the three murders of three different African American people in the US. It started with first Trevor Martin with um, George Zeminar murdering him in cold blood at night. And he only had, due to suspicions of him having, doing illegal activity and just in any way in that sorts. The second one was Eric Gardner. And he was murdered in cold blooded too by a cop. But I'll call that police brutality. That's what also Black Lives Matter fights for too. And then the last one would be and the last one would be Michael Brown. Michael Brown is also another murder of police brutality due to the system of injustice. So according to Brian Trauma and Chardonnay of from Chardonnay Institution of Technology and Advanced Learning, after Michael Brown's death, they started several protests around the city of Ferguson, which is also which is basically near St. Louis. Due to these deaths of these several people, these calls caused the movement to progress even further and more people to particip participate inside the movement of Black Lives Matter. Due to the outrage of people that they started hashtagging, the way it started, people started hashtagging Black Lives Matter on posts about Bruce, police brutality and other things in that sort and discrimination. Some of the finders of Black Lives Matter are is three of them, Patricia Khan Callers, Elisa Garza and Opia Tamikti. These three founders found this back six years ago, 2013. Some of the goals of Black Lives Matter is to, they want, there's three goals they're trying to pursue in 2020. The three goals is basically get everybody to engage in our communities to our, for our election process so we get people that are more for black people. The second goal would be to educate are also educate our people about Kevinism and issues that impact us the most inside the U.S. And the last goal, the third goal, will probably be promote voter registration among Generation Z in the Black community. 
and like so we can get more allies. And those are the three goals we're trying to pursue in 2020. According to BlackLivesMatter.com, the campaign's focus would include racial injustice, police brutality, criminal justice reform, black immigration, economic injustice, LGBTQ and human rights, environmental conditions, voting rights and suppression, health care, government corruption, education, and common sense gun laws. The Black Lives Matter movement uh, was responsible for was the freeage of 21 Savage. Another action that the Black Lives Matter movement was responsible for was the six-month anniversary of the murder of Stephen Clark. The Black Lives Matter global activists all um, all intended to highlight the violence inflicted upon black hoodies by the police force and urgent need to transform policing in America. Call for justice. Some global actions that the Black Lives Matter movement are responsible for would be the action at the San Diego border on June of 2018. The Black Lives Matter activists from across the country gathered at the San Diego border to demand a treatment of immigrants and refugees seeking asylum in the United States. For the final part of our video, we're clipping a short clip of like how the founders of the three founders of Black Lives Matter managed to put this thing together and how they thought of it. So I hope you enjoy. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> It went viral. viral when we first created it, yeah. actually. In that moment, I think we knew that we were onto something that was resonating in a, in a very deep way. The hashtag is this phenomenon now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to go there? People are tweeting us like, hey, didn't y'all create Black Lives Matter? And then all of a sudden, it's like the Black Lives Matter movement, and then none of us are actually there to tell the story of the Black Lives Matter. <laughs> The narrative has really evolved to this weird thing of, oh, you know, again, our black women are fighting for our black men. And it's like, wait a minute, what? No, we're fighting for all of us. <laughs> all right, let me just set the record straight. My name is Opal Tometi. My name is Patrice Colors. I'm Alicia Garza. We, we are, are the founders, founders of hashtag Black Lives Matter. I am born and raised in the Bay Area in California. There's not many of us left. We're almost <laughs> like unicorns. I come from a long line of strong black women. My grandmother was a domestic worker. My mom did domestic work. A lot of my background in organizing comes from organizing with women. I come to this work because I'm the daughter of Nigerian immigrants who are actually undocumented for most of um, my childhood, possibly facing deportation. That, to me, really shaped my, um, my entire kind of, you know, formative years. I grew up in Los Angeles and witnessed a significant amount of state violence. I remember the police officer who would patrol our block and would harass my siblings. And I remember feeling frightened most of the time. So my coming into this work has to do with the fight for black lives. We have breaking news tonight in the case of the unarmed black teenager shot dead by a crime when watch. When Trayvon Martin was murdered by George Zimmerman, this was a case where a child had literally been stalked and killed just steps away from home. The conversation that was happening in the media was what did Trayvon do to cause his own death? The reason Trayvon Martin died was because he looked a certain way. He was wearing a hoodie and that way is how gangsters look. Thinking about my 14 year old brother and not literally not being able to sleep because I was like, this cannot be. <laughs> announced that the jury had acquitted George Zimmerman of all charges, it actually felt like I got punched in the gut. So I went on social media to try to find words for what was happening. And what I wanted in that moment was some love for us. And so I wrote a love letter to Black people um, on Facebook. And I said, Black people, I love you. I love us. We matter. Our lives matter. Black lives matter. 
and my sister here threw a hashtag in front of it. <laughs> she was like, that's the business right there. <laughs> and then uh, my sister Opal said, I have all these skills and I can help build this out. We need people to have a space to tell their stories. We need folks to have a space. My name is Christian Sippin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. I'm Mike Smith. I'm Christian Sippin. And we're going to be discussing the Chosa Deviants on society today for social change about for racism. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I'm Christian Sippin. I'm Mike. <laughs> uh, <you're a> bot. <laughs> <laughs> Box. Yeah, Hello, my name is Christian Sippin. And I'm Mike Smith. And we're going to be discussing deviance and social change inside society. It's a short film. <laughs> God damn. You said we did. Hi, I'm Christian Sippin. And what's up? I'm Michael Smith. And then today we made a short film and then we're about to discuss deviance and um, social change inside the U.S. After the film, we will discuss the issues that happen in the film along with organizations that help work and fix the issue. And the organization that we're going to... Hello, I'm Christian Sippin. And what's up? I'm Michael Smith. Today we made a couple of short films to show deviance and social change in the U.S. After the films, we will discuss the issues that occurred in organizations that could help... They, ah! Along with organizations that help fix the issue. Help fix it.